Do you actually know how caffeine affects your body? Because I'm sure you usually wake up in the morning, you prepare a cup of tea or maybe coffee. And uh, maybe sometimes when you come back after work, you're bored, you so decide to just take a glass. Or maybe, yeah, whatever you usually do to your coffee or maybe your tea. But eventually, you feel that you're motivated, you feel alert, you feel good, you feel like you have new energy, you want to work. Do you know how that actually usually happen? Now, today we're going to make sure that you understand how that happens and how you can take advantage of something of that sort. And um, yeah, I think we're tra- we, we, we also going to see uh, the reason why sometimes before you do a, an exercise, taking a cup of maybe something that contains caffeine would be so good. And uh, yeah, basically we're going to start with that. I'm sure you can see here, this is the nerves. This is just a single nerve. You have so many of them. And that's what you usually call the tea that you're talking about here, the caffeine, a mild CNS. CNS is central nervous system stimulant. So it usually stimulates your nervous system. And we're going to see exactly how. Now, first of all, the figure them. How do you get tired? How do you feel that you're tired or maybe you're bored? How does that actually happen? Because for us to understand how there's some um, coffee that we, or maybe tea that you're taking, for us to understand how it's going to come into play, we first of all need to understand how you are going to feel when you become tired. Now, first of all, let's just ignore that part. Or should we? Let's just go back. Now, one thing you have to understand is our bodies usually use an energy form that we call ATP, adenosine triphosphate. We have adenosine here, which is our A. It's connected to a sugar, which is there. I'm going to use S. And then we have three P. We have three phosphates. Your body will break this bond to provide energy. From chemistry, we understand that um, when you break a bond, you're going to release energy. This is the energy that we need. Now, when uh, you, during the day, when you're doing something, you're using a lot of that energy in your system because now the sugar will be taken to mitochondria and uh, through the processes it will go through in that powerhouse. You're going to produce ATP. Now, this ATP is what we're going to now use to form energy in the system. And uh, one of the byproducts, one of the things that usually get released is this adenosine. Adenosine is a type of a neurotransmitter. We have several types, but this is one of them. Meaning that we have adenosine being released after using the ATP energy. So ATP is the energy that your cell understand. And uh, after breaking everything, so we have adenosine. And this one is a neurotransmitter. A neurotransmitter usually interact with the nerves. Now we have uh, the nerve systems. They are all over the body. But we have a special concentration along your spinal cord and inside your head, which makes your brain. And this is where now this will come into play. Now, this is our nervous system. This is the nucleus. We're going to be very interested on this end here. And we're going to zoom in into one of uh, this structure here. Let me zoom it in. And uh, yeah, let's create some. Okay. Not the best when it comes to drawing. So we're going to create something like this there. So this is us zooming it in. Now remember we have adenosine now being a byproduct of using a lot of energy. Meaning that during the day when you work, you work or you do something, at the end of the day you're going to have accumulated a lot of adenosine. Because now you're breaking uh, this adenosine from uh, ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. Now you're you're getting a lot of this in your system. And uh, this, remember, because it's a neurotransmitter, it's going to interact with the nerves. And that's why I've zoomed in, because I want to show you the receptors. This is a receptor. This is a receptor. This is a receptor. It's going to be a little bit more technical, but bear with me, because this is going to make a lot of sense. So we need to just... Make sure that we understand the basics. So we have so many receptors. Now, these receptors, remember we have adenosine. This adenosine usually uh, bind to this end here by this receptor. Receptor is like um, a structure that would accept a certain other structure of a molecule. Now, we have this. Now, the structure of adenosine, we're going to just, because we actually, I cannot draw. So we're going to use a shape like a triangle, like that one, to denote the molecular structure of our adenosine. Now, this one, we're going to form so many triangles in the system 
because we've used a lot of energy. Now, this is what is going to go into this here. So, what will happen here, because this is our zoomed in image, so what you're going to have is this triangle getting into the receptor. So, we're going to have a lot of them uh, binding all over here. I know by now you are asking where, where um, caffeine will come in, but just bear with me. So if you have a lot of that, it's going to activate your system into feeling tired, feeling uh, that you need to sleep or something. And it's very interesting by the way it comes to sleeping because now when you accumulate a lot of during the day, you accumulate a lot of adenosine transphosphate, you'll have to get rid of them. One of the way is just binding here. So if you have so much of the, the adenosine triphosphate and uh, now releasing adenosine, so you have, you have adenosine so much of it in the system, it's like a debt. So at the end of the day, you'll have to like get rid of this by just sleeping off. So when you do that, they're just reducing the system. That's why early in the morning, you feel uh, you're good, you want to go. And that's why when uh, you don't have enough sleep, you usually feel tired when you maybe... You're, you were supposed to have an eight hour sleep, but then you got a two hour sleep. You didn't have enough time to take care of this. And that's why you'll wake up or maybe even during the whole day, you'll still be feeling tired because you still have this adenosine. Uh, no, uh, the, um, yeah, you still have the adenosine still in the system interacting with the nerves. So that's why you need to just get rid of this. And when you take something like coffee or caffeine, the sleep is going to go away and uh, we are close to now getting how that happens. Now, remember, this one will activate the nerves into feeling or just instructing or telling your body that now you're tired in a way. So now something very interesting. Now, the structure of the caffeine is almost similar to what we have here. So this is our caffeine. So the caffeine is almost similar, but this is, so this is caffeine, but our adenosine is a triangle, a triangle like this. It's a complete triangle. We are about now to make a lot of sense. Now, you can see here, this is not a complete, this is kind of a, is it a rhombus? If I remember well. So this one here is what is going to make you feel uh, good. Now, remember, we still have some, uh, let's say, uh, we have some of the molecules, or some of the receptors are free. So when you bind on, when you take caffeine, uh, it goes, and uh, guess what? Because the structure is almost similar, it gets there, it binds, but then it's incomplete. It is not as um, sharp as this one, because this one can go directly there, so it's going to activate our nerves. But now, this one cannot, because it's incomplete. The shape is almost similar, so it's going to bind, yes, but then it's not going to activate anything. And uh, this is what we call now competitive inhibition because you're going to have caffeine uh, binding into the site and once it binds that site is not available for our adenosine so our adenosine will just be floating around but we have caffeine occupying the space where it could have come and entered so up to that point i think we're good because now if we bind so many of the caffeine molecules here, if we bind so many of them, it means that adenosine won't have to come here and it's not actually going to you know, make us feel tired. Now, because now this is an incomplete triangle, the shape is not as good as this one, it's not going to activate anything, meaning that you'll still be feeling, okay, you have energy to do something else, you still have the morale, because now this is here, it's inhibiting or it's preventing adenosine from binding. So you're totally okay. You're not actually going to feel tired at all. At all, at all. Now, at the end of the day, this will wear off. Because it's going to go out. And guess what? You still have adenosine just floating around. And it's going to bind. Um, and after binding, it's going to now create uh, the activation. So that's why... When you take maybe coffee or maybe tea, uh, the effects usually wear off at, after some time. So unless maybe you add something on top of that for you to just keep going. So this is one of the reasons why you don't feel sleepy when you take coffee because you're not activating the nerves to make you feel tired, maybe feel sleepy. That's why when you take this at night, you're not going to feel as, or even to fall asleep. You, you are going to take a really long time before you fall asleep. And at the same time, because you're still using energy, you're going to accumulate a lot of adenosine 
So the following day, because you do not sleep at the previous night, it means that you're going to have very sleepy day. So basically, this is what usually happen when you take a fin. But you can take advantage of this to make your body even do something a little bit more. Because now you see, if for example, you're doing something like exercise, or maybe you're just going to the gym, you want to increase the time or to increase the exercises you usually do. If you usually last for like, a, let's say, one hour you want to do your exercises for like um let's say two hours if you usually last for one hour if you take caffeine you've seen what will happen because now you don't have as much of this adenosine that will make you feel tired so the room that was supposed to be occupied by adenosine is being taken uh, by our caffeine molecule and this is not activating your so competitively it's inhibiting the action of adenosine by this you can be able to endure more so long as you're going to provide your body because now it'll go the, the graph will just go like this so if you want the graph to keep going up is so you need to add more energy so that your body gets something to burn along otherwise if you take caffeine and uh, you don't increase the level of the amount of energy that you're going to use I'm giving an example, maybe you are running or maybe you're in the gym. If you're not going to increase, it will get to a point where now you don't have enough energy and your body now feels sad because you don't have enough of now the fuel it's supposed to use. But if you continue providing the same fuel, you can continue doing the exercises and all that for longer. If you are an athlete or maybe you are just training, you're building your muscles, you want to increase the amount of time, usually take the gym, can just take a cup of caffeine. It will help you. 